Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Debanjo and I want to strongly welcome you to this uh, teaching on uh, how we could uh, solve YAC uh, 2022 mathematics objective questions. Uh, in this video, we are going to be solving the YAC 2022 mathematics objective questions. So in the second part of this video, we are going to be solving the theory part of the Y2022 mathematics questions as well. So it means that you need to stay tuned or watch out for the second part of this video, which we are going to be addressing or solve uh, the theory part of the uh, question. So in this video, what are we what are we expecting or what are we going to do in this video? We are going to tell you the topics where they pick all the questions one after the other. And also, we are going to solve each quest, each question systematically, and uh, we are going to pick the correct answer out of the option provided. So I want you to stay tuned, relax, take your pencil or your biro, and uh, join us as we solve this uh, YA 2022 mathematics objective question uh, step by step. Now let's jump to the first uh, question and see what it's like. If you have the uh, past question with you, you can pick it, you can bring it out and compare it with uh, what we are going to be solving. If truly it is a 2022 uh, Y mathematics objective question. Now let's quickly jump to the first question. Now the quest first question is what you are seeing on the screen right now, which says that we have to evaluate correct or false significant figure 573.06 times 184.25. So in this uh, question, they're just trying to test your ability on how you can approximate uh, values of course of course the question is from approximation so we have to approximate the result we get from this multiplied by this value so if you look at it you can take your calculator or your four figure table to multiply these two values if you take your calculator it's going to give us a uh, one around five uh, thousand five hundred and eighty six point three zero five so this is the raw uh, answer given to us when you use your calculator or your uh, perfect table. Then the question wants you to approximate to four significant figure. So if you look at these values now, the fourth significant number here is a five year. So we have to approximate it now. If you look at the number after five, it's eight. It is eight, which is more than five. So we run it up to one and add it to this five then it becomes 6. Then every other number behind it becomes 0. That means that why you are having this 0, 0 here, point zero zero. So invariably, we have been able to approximate this result to 4 significant uh, figure. Now, if you look at the option given to us here, option A to B, C, D, we recall that the, the correct answer here is option A. So let's move to the next question, question number 2. The question said that we have to change 432 base 5 to a number in base 3. This is uh, number base. We have to convert from base 5 to base 3. And uh, let's see how we can do that. Now, if you look at it critically, we cannot move from base 5 to base 3 immediately or straight away. No. So we have to move from base 5 to base 10 first, then from base 10 to base 3. Then how do we move from base 5 to base 10? Is by doing expansion, by expanding the, this value. It's expansion uh, form that can give us the, we can, that can take a, a number from base, a particular base to base 10. We expand. So how do we expand? You tag this number from the back 0, 1, then 2. Then you need to expand. That will be having 4 times the base raised to power the number you're having here, which is 2. So we have 4 times 5. The 5 year is the base, then this 2 year is the power of this 4 year, which is 2, then plus 3 times 5 raised to the power 1, then plus 2 times 5 raised to the power 0, and that's what we are having here. Then uh, 5 raised to the power 2 is 25 times 4, we give us 100. Then three, 5 raised to the power 1 is uh, 5 times 3 will give us 15. Then two, 5 raised to the power 0 is 1 times 2 give us 2 here. So if you had, if you simplify what you're having here, it's going to give us 117 base 10. Then you now take this 117 base 10 to base 3 now. 
by doing long division method so you start dividing this uh, 117 by 3 because we are taking it to base 3 so 3 in 117 will give us 39 remainder 0 then 3 in 39 will give us 13 remainder 0 as well 3 in 13 will give us 4 remainder 1 3 in 4 will give us 1 remainder uh, 1 then 3 in uh, 1 will give us 0 remainder 1 so we start writing your answer from the down part and that will give us 1100 base 3 so 432 base 5 432 base 5 will give us 11100 base 3 so the correct option here is uh, uh, B 111100 base 3 that's the correct option there so let's move to the next question question number 3 it says that uh, given that uh, A and B are set are set such that uh, the number of elements in set A is uh, 8, the number of elements in set B is 12, and the number of elements in A intersection B is 3. Find number of elements in A union B. This question is on uh, sets, and that we are having here as it set is the topic. And uh, this question could be solved whether you use uh, using Venn diagram or using the formula instead of the Venn diagram. So we have the number of elements in our a union b is equal to number of elements in a plus number of elements in set b minus number of elements in a, a intersection b so our aim is to find number of elements in a union b which is this we have been given this we have been given this we have been given this as well if you put it back into the formula we have in here we have it to be number of elements in a union b is equal to we are given number of elements in set a which is eight I give you number of elements in set B which is 12 minus number of intersection between A and B which is 3. So if you simplify that further, we have A plus 12 give us 20 minus 3, we give us 17. So that means option B is the right answer for this question number 3. So let's jump to the next question, which is question number 4. And that uh, question number 4 is on sword. The question is P from sword. And question said that we are to if sort 24 plus sort 96 minus sort 600 is equal to y sort 6. We are to find the value of y. So the ability, your ability to be able to simplify sort is highly required here. Uh, it's, sorry, it's highly required here, right? As I said earlier, you can see that you can see simplify sort 24. It's not at the simplest form. You can simplify sort 96. You can also simplify sort 600. And how do we simplify sort? is by you you're thinking of two numbers you can multiply together to give us this 24 and one of them is the perfect square so that will give us a uh, six times four four is the perfect square there so that what you're having here that so 24 give us four times six four times six because four is here four here is a perfect square also we can simplify so 96 that will give us so 16 times six we can also simplify so 600 that will give us so 100 times six 100 here is a perfect square 16 here is a perfect square then if you simplify this further, sort 4 will give us 2. Then we are left with sort 6. So we are having this to be 2 sort 6. Then sort 16 is 4. Then, then we cannot simplify sort 6. So that we are having 4 sort 6 left. Minus sort 100 is 10. Then uh, sort 100 is 10. Then you are having sort 6 left. That we are having 10 sort 6 equal to y sort 6. Then we can simplify this further. You are having 2 mangoes plus four mangoes minus ten mangoes because you are having the same sort here sort six sort six sort six. so that means you can add and subtract so two sort six plus four sort six will give us six sort six then minus ten sort six you are holding somebody you are having six mangoes with you and you are holding somebody ten mangoes if you pay with what you have that means you see behind that person four mangoes that, that's why you're having minus four sort six here equal to y sort six then if you compare both sides, you can have sort 6 here, sort 6 here, you can ca they can cancel out. So that means we have minus 4 is equal to y. So that means, therefore, y will be what? Minus 4. So if you look at the option given to us, we have that uh, option D is the correct answer for this uh, question number 4. Let's quickly jump to the next question 5. You are to evaluate 23 times 54 in mode 7. The question is from modular arithmetic. SS1 topic modular arithmetic so we have to multiply this value by this value then leave our answer in mode 7 that's what we have to do here so 
of course if you multiply 23 times 54 by 54 rather we have 1242 so this value is more than uh, mod 7 so what do we do then we need to divide the answer we got by 7 then our remainder will be the result of what we are looking for so when we divide 1242 by 7 it gives us 177 177 remainder 3 so we are now write the remainder here down as the value of this this multiply this multiply by this in mode 7 so the, re the remainder is 3 so that means 223 times 54 in mode 7 will give us 3 so if you look at the option provided we have uh, option b to be the correct option quickly let's jump to the next question question number 6 which says that uh, if 4 raised to power 3s is equal to 16 raised to power s plus 1 you have to find the value of x the question is from the indices equation in within the in indices so then uh, if that is taken care of we can see that we can see simplify this uh, base and this base very uh, properly so that they will have the same base so we can simplify 4 by finding the index of 4 so that will be 2 raised to power 2 then 16 2 raised to power 4 then uh, these two can multiply 3 hex 4 can multiply s plus 1 according to the one of the law of indices so if 2 multiply 3x that will give us 6s 4 multiply the bracket we have 4s plus 4 then the base can cancel out the base so that means we have 6s is equal to 4s plus 4 left then if you collect like times you have 6s minus 4 is equal to 4 6s minus 4 will give us 2x 6x minus 4x rather will give us 2x equals to 4 then s will be 2 so if you look at the option given to us we discover that uh, b is the correct answer so let's move to question number 7 question number 7 is from the uh, it's on uh, profit and loss as a topic a weaver bought a bundle of grass for five, you know, 50 dollars from which he made eight mats if each mat was sold for 15 dollars find the percentage profit so if you look at the question we know the amount uh, the weaver sold one mat the question so that told us that he sold if he sold if each mat was sold for 15 dollars so if a mat is 15 dollars and we are told that he made eight mats from the grass so that means you can know the the total amount of the eight mat sold that will be eight multiplied by one the amount of one uh, mat so that will give us uh, 120 dollars for the eight mat then we can know whether the person made profit or loss so profit is selling price minus cost price the selling price the total selling price we have here is 1000 sorry 120 dollars and uh, the amount the person bought the grass is uh, 50 dollars so if you surprise that that will give us 70 dollars that means the person made profit of 70 dollars then how do we get the percentage profit percentage profit is the profit over cost price multiplied by 100 then uh, the profit is 70 dollars divided by cost price which is 50 multiplied by 100 and the percentage profit will give us 140 percent so the correct option in the option given to us is option b as the answer to that question number seven don't forget we are solving wahec 2022 mathematics uh, objective question and uh, we want you to follow us as we go in the journey of uh, solving those questions i hope it's, uh, it has been interesting so far so if that is the case let's jump to the next question question number eight question number eight says that find the 17th term of the arithmetic progression ap minus six comma minus one comma four comma dot 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 so this is a question is from uh, arithmetic progression that is sequence and series so we are giving some series sorry some sequence rather we are giving the first term second term and fourth term and uh, we are to find the 17th term we have been told that it's arithmetic progression so no problem about that even though we are not told we should be able to know that uh, should be able to find out whether it is ap or gp so we are looking for a 17 terms so there is a formula of finding the number of terms in ap which is uh, 
the first term plus open bracket number of term minus one multiplied by the common difference so with the first term here is a uh, minus six number of term we are looking for our hand here is 17 term according to the question then the uh, common difference is a uh, five by removing minus one minus minus six that will give us minus one plus six minus one plus six give us five that we got is five then if you substitute whatever you, what those things you have here into this formula we have a uh, 17 time you're looking for is equals to minus six which is the first term plus open bracket 17 minus one close bracket multiply by five if you simplify that further we have minus six plus 16 times five 16 times five will give us 80 then minus six plus 80 will give us 74 that means the 17 term if you continue this sequence when you get to 17 term you will see 74 there and if you look at the option given to us, we recall that uh, C is the correct option there. Let's move to the question number nine. Question number nine is on variation as a topic where they pick the question from. Question says that N varies directly as N and inversely as the square of P. If you interpret that, N varies directly as N and inversely as square of P. That's what you are going to get when you interpret it. Then all you need to do is to change this expression to equation by introducing a constant to the expression and if you introduce constant k into the expression that will make it an equation then you are given the value of m and the value of n and the, the value of uh, p so if you substitute that into the equation we have 3 is equal to 2k minus 1 squared if you simplify that further by cross multiplying you have 3 times 1 square is 1 is equal to 2k then find your k divide both sides by 2 that gives us 3 over 2 so our constant is 3 over 2 then question has, now say find m in terms of n and p so what you need to do is to return your value of your k or constant into this equation then if i do that i have m is equal to 3 over 2n over p square if you simplify that further these two can come down then we have m is equal to 3n over 2p squared. So if you look at the option given to us, we score that uh, it is option A that is uh, correct as the out of all the option given to us. Let's jump to the question number 10. Question number 10 is a is a algebraic fraction. Uh, and uh, in algebraic fraction, there is a substitution part of, uh, uh, there. So this is question is from uh, algebraic fraction, and uh, we have to substitute the values of A and b into this uh, fraction given to us so we are given fraction a b plus open bracket a plus b squ all squared divided by open bracket a minus b all squared already we know the value of our a we know the value of our b then what you need to do is to substitute it correctly so b is minus 7 put it there plus open bracket a is 3 plus b is minus 7 so open another bracket minus 7 close the bracket then close the b bracket which then squared it divided by a is 3 minus open bracket minus 7 because b is minus 7 close bracket close the b bracket then if you simplify this further we have 5 times minus 7 we give minus 35 plus open bracket 3 then plus times minus here will give us minus then uh, 7 close the bracket divided by 3 plus minus times minus will give us plus 7 the all squared then we simplify this further 3 minus 7 will give us minus 4 then minus 4 square will give us 16 plus 16. Then under as well, we have 3 plus 7, that gives us 10. 10 square will give us 100. Then if you simplify this further, we have minus 35 plus 16 over 100. And that will give us uh, minus 19 over 100. And if you divide that, we have minus 0 0.19 as the answer, which is option number C there as the correct option in the question. So let's jump to question number 11 and that question uh, is on a uh, ratio as on ratio three boys share ten thousand five hundred dollars dollars is the is the currency of uh, gambian gambia so ten thousand five hundred dollars in the ratio of six to seven to eight find the largest share the largest share is a uh, eight so what do we do how do we go about that is by adding all the ratios together and that'll give us 21 
then to get the largest share there that will be eight the ratio of that largest share divided by total ratio multiplied by ten thousand five hundred dollars then if you simplify that further that will give us four thousand dollars and then the correct option there is option a if you look at it critically let's jump to the next question the next question is on a uh, percentage error percentage error the length of a piece of stick is 1.75 meter a boy measure it as a uh, 1.80 meter find the percentage error in the measurement so error how do we get error error is measure length minus actual length so the, the boy measure it as 1.80 meter and the actual length is 1.75 if you subtract that that will give us the error the boy made so which is 0.05 and we are now to put this in percentage now so percentage error is error divided by actual length multiplied by 100 so and what is the error, error is 0.05 divided by 1.75 which is the actual length multiplied by 100 if you simplify 0.05 take it to a fraction that will give us 5 over 100 divided by which is d divided if you can take this 1.75 also to fraction that will give us 175 divided by 100 then multiply by 100 if you cut this very well sorry you can change this division to times as well by this one going swap, swapping this 100 go up 175 go down then you cannot cut cut then you'll be having 20, 20, 20 divided by 7 and that should give us uh, two numbers 6 over 7 percent as the percentage error committed in the, by the boy and if you look at the option critically given to us we we'll discover that option b is the correct option there and also let's jump to the next question which is question number 13. question number 13 is on the uh, uh, simultaneous linear equation uh simultaneous linear equations so we are given equation 5s plus 3y equals to 4 and 5s minus 3y equals to 2. we have to find the value of uh, this uh, expression we are having there so all you need to do is first of all get the value of your x and y before you can think of get solving this expression and how do we do that is by solving these two equations simultaneously we have 5s plus 3y equals to 4 equation 1 5s minus 3y equals to 2 equation 2 then you can see that uh, the coefficient of this unknown uh, this unknown are equal and this unknown are also equal so if you can use elimination to eliminate one of the unknown so if you had the two equation we know that uh, y will leave so we'll be left with uh, 5x plus 5x that will give us 10x uh, 3y plus, uh, plus minus 3y will give us 0 then 4 plus 2 will give us 6 so we can divide both sides by 10 that will give us s s will be 6 over 10 equals to 3 over 5 by reducing the fraction now that is the value of our x then you can substitute the value of s equals to 3 over 5 into any of the equation whether equation 1 or equation 2 but in this video we substitute it into equation 1 so that means we have 5 multiplied by 3 over 5 plus 3y equals to 4 then 5 can take care of 5 here we have 3 plus 3y equals to 4 collect like times 3y is equals to 4 minus 3 that give us 1 so divide both sides by 3 that give us y equals to 1 over 3 so now we know the value of our head, we know the value of our y, so we can easily substitute that into this expression here. So we have 25, 25s squared minus 9y squared. Of course, uh, what's our x? s is 3 over 5, all squared, minus 9. What's our y? 1 over 3, all squared. So 3 over 5, all squared will give us 9 over 25 then 1 over 3 square will give us 1 over 9 so 25 will take care of 25 we have, we have 9 left then 9 also will take care of 9 we have 1 left so we have 9 minus 1 left equals to 8 so if you look at the option given to us we have discovered that option d is the correct option now if you look at uh, question number 14 and the question is a word problem mary has a uh, eight dollar sorry three dollars pardon me more than ben Mary has three dollars more than Ben, but five dollars less than Jane. If Mary has S dollars, how much does Jane and Ben have all together? Let's look at it critically. We know the what Mary has. Mary has S dollars, but Mary has three dollars more than Ben. So if you want to know Ben, the um uh, what Ben has, 
if Mary has three more than Ben. So how do you get Ben home? Ben will be x minus three because Mary has three more than Ben. So also if you look at it, then uh, but five dollar less than Jane. So Mary has uh, five dollar less than Jane. So how do we get uh, uh, Jane uh, share? Uh, what uh, or what uh, Jane has? That will be hers plus five because this is what uh, Mary has. So and Jane has five more than Mary. So then we have s plus five. Now we have we know what uh, Ben has. We know what Jane has. So we have to find uh, how much they both have all together. So by adding their their uh, money together. S plus S minus three plus S plus five. Then if you simplify that S plus S will give us two X. Minus three plus five will give us two. Then that is the total amount both of them has all together. So it means that the uh, option D is the correct answer. Uh, two S plus two is the correct answer, which is option D. Now question number fifteen, which is on a proposition. Proposition. Consider the statement P Steven is intelligent. Q Steven is good at mathematics. If P then Q. That's what this one implies. If P then Q. Which of the following is a valid conclusion? If you look at all the options given to us, look at this. If Steven is good, P is not talking about good. P is talking about intelligent. It's Q that is talking about good. So immediately you should know that that has been it has not really it has really nullified the conclusion. Let's go to the second one. If Steven is not good, P is not talking about good. He's talking about intelligent. So, so it is Q that's talking about uh, good at mathematics. So immediately that will nullify this option as well. Let's go to C. If Steven is not intelligent, which is correct because P is still talking about intelligent. So let's leave this one for let's go to d if steven is not good at mathematics you can see that uh, p is not talking about uh, mathematics talking about intelligence so this also is nullified so without moving without wasting our time you can see that the only valid option we have is option c which is talking about intelligence if uh, steven is not intelligent then he is not good at mathematics so option c is the only valid option there out of the four options provided in this question. Let's move to question number 16. Val the find what is the value of P? What value of sorry, what value of P will make this quadratic expression a perfect square? So that means we are looking for the value of P here. Eh? So we can easily use uh, completing the square to find the value of this. We can complete this square by to find this value of P. How do we do that? The question of course the question is from the quadratic so p will be half and square the question of x what is the question of x here that's minus four if you have it you have minus four over two then squared it so p will give us minus two squared then p will give us four so to make this expression a perfect square you'll be having s squared minus four s plus four so the option here is a uh, c so pardon me i wrote d here so the option is a uh, c correct option here is C so the solution is correct but the option picked there is a uh, wrong so that was a uh, not that was not intentional so the option is correct option here is C now let's move to the next question question number 17 find the value of s such that uh, 1 over s plus 4 over 3 s minus 5 over 6 s plus 1 is 0 the question is from algebraic fraction as well under algebraic fraction, we have simplification of algebraic fraction. We have a substitution. We have uh, the condition for to, to make the fraction zero and the undivine fraction as well. So what value of S will make these fractions, this expression zero? What do you do first? You need to first simplify this uh, expression further by finding the whole CM. The SCM here is 6x. So if the SCM is 6x, S in 6x will give us 6. 6 times 1 will give us 6. Plus 3s in 6x will give us 2. 2 times 4 will give us 8. Minus 6s in 6x will give us uh, 1. 1 times 5 will give us 5. Plus 1 divided by 6x 
one one in six x will give us six x six times one six x times one will give us six x. Then if you simplify this further, we have six plus a to give us a uh, fourteen. Fourteen minus five will give us nine plus six x. Now, what value of s will, will give us? Uh, will make this expression this fraction zero. The only theory, or the only way this fraction can be zero is when the numerator is equal to zero. I will repeat. The only condition that can make this uh, fraction zero is when the numerator is equal to zero. When the numerator is equal to zero, that means the fraction is undefined. But in this case, we are not talking about undefined. We are talking about what fraction, what value of s will make this fraction zero. That means if this numerator is equal to zero, then the fraction will be equal to zero. What is zero divided by one? That gives us zero. What is two, zero divided by two? That gives us zero. So when the numerator is equal to zero, then the uh, fraction will be equal to zero. So if you equate, equate this to be zero, nine plus six a equals to zero. Collect like times six a equals to minus nine. Divide both sides by six. That will give us uh, minus three over two. So the value of s that can make this uh, expression zero is minus three over two, which is option C as the correct option there. Quickly, let's jump to the next uh, question for YHEC 2022 Mathematics Objective Questions. Question number 18 is a uh, no, subject formula. Subject formula. Make T the subject of K. Sorry. Make T the subject of, subject of K is equal to M then square root of T minus P over half. Our aim is to make T the subject of the formula. How do we do that? We can divide both sides by this m, so that uh, uh, we can work, we can deal with this square root. So if you divide both sides by m, that will, that means you have k is cos k over m equals the square root of t minus p over half. Then we cannot take care of this square root now because this t is t cage. The square root has cage this t. We cannot remove it yet. So how do we, how do we remove square root? Is by finding the square. So if you, I take the square of this side. And I take the square of this side, then I'll be having k over m squared. Then that square here will take care of the square root. That means I'll be having t minus p over half. Of course, I can cross multiply. But before I cross multiply, of course, this, this uh, left hand side means k square over m square. We know that. So if I cross multiply, I'll be having r k square over m square is equal to t uh, minus p. Then if that is the case, then I can take uh, this minus p to the other side here. If I take minus p to the other side here, I will be having t is equal to r k square over m square plus p. Then if I find the LCM, which is m square, then I will simplify that further by say m square in m square. 1, 1 times r k square will give r k square plus 1 in m square, m square, m square times p will give up p m squared. Then if you look at this question uh, critically, we just got that option B is the correct option we have uh, in the question. So quickly, let's jump to question number 19. Question number 19 is on plane geometry. It's a plane geometry question. And if you look at the question, we are told that uh, side XY, side XY, this side is equal to side YZ, this side. That's why you're having this stripe on the two lines. So invariably, you should know something will happen to this triangle y, z, x. That means it's going to be an isosceles triangle because two sides are equal. And if that should be the case, now we are giving angle x, y, z, this angle, uh, sorry, angle x, y, z, this angle inside the triangle 130 degrees. We have to find the value of y, this, which is this angle here. Then how do we do that? We can easily do that by knowing if I... If this triangle is isosceles triangle, sorry, if this triangle is an isosceles triangle, that means this angle of isosceles triangles are equal. So that means this angle here and this angle here are equal. And that's what we are having here that angle yz, angle yzx, yzx, which is this angle inside here, is equal to angle yxz, which is this angle in here. So then that means I can find this angle here. By removing this angle from total angle in a circle, which is sorry, total angle in a triangle, which is 180, then then divide it by two because this angle here and this angle here are equal, so they have to share this remaining value, the remaining angles. 
so I have one and eighty minus one over one minus one thirty divided by two. So and one eighty minus one thirty will give us fifty. Fifty divided by two give us twenty five degrees. So it shows that this angle here is, is twenty five degrees. Then if this angle here is twenty five degrees, then we can find angle Y because this angle here and this angle here are adjacent angle. They are both adjacent angle or angle on a straight line. We can also say angle on a straight line. We know that angle on a straight line had up to 180 degrees. So that means y will be 180 minus angle y z x, which is 25. So y equals 180 minus 25. That will be 155 degrees. So the only option that is correct here or that is valid here is uh, option D. So that is for question number 19. Let's move to question number 20. The question number 20 is on a polygon. It says that uh, an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 22.5 degrees. Find the number of sides the polygon has. So, an exterior angle, which is talking about each exterior angle of a polygon, of a regular polygon. We know that each exterior angle of a regular polygon is uh, to get each exterior angle of a regular polygon. That would be total uh the total angle the total exterior angle of a regular polygon divided by number of side and the total exterior angle of a regular polygon is a uh, 360 degrees so that means you have 360 divided by n as each exterior angle of a regular polygon so we can equate this to the value given to us for that uh, exterior angle of that polygon and that means we'll be having 22.5 equals to 360 divided by n then if you cross multiply we have 22.5 n equals to 360 degrees then we can divide both sides by 22.5 that means our n will be 16 so that means the polygon has 16 sides so out of the option provided we have that option d is the correct option there let's move to question number 21 and question number 22 they are together they are both question one, 21 and question, two, question, number, uh, question number 22 they are to use this uh, diagram to solve the two uh, questions now if you look at the diagram given to us in the diagram angle poq is equals 150 degrees angle poq this angle inside the other angle poq is a reflex so we are not talking about reflex we are talking about the the in now one and the radius of the circle is 4.2 centimeter given so take pi to be 22 over 7 use the information to answer question number 21 and question number 22 question number 21 said i find the length of of the minor hack p r q minor hack this is the minor hack here p r q the other hack here is the major hack so we are looking for minor hack so the question is from plane measuration and the length of an hack is a uh, theta over 360 times 2 pi r so the angle subtended by that uh, hack p r q is at uh, the center is a uh, 150 degrees so that means theta will be 150 degrees divided by 360 times 2 times pi which is 22 over 7 times radius which is 4.2 and if you simplify this by cutting down or using your calculator you discover that the hack will be 11 centimeter so that means the option we have here that is valid or that is correct is option A, 11.00 centimeter. This diagram as well, we have to use to solve this question number 22. We say that we should find the area of the sector OPSQ. Sector OPSQ. That means you have to find the area of the major sector. Yeah, not this one here. Yeah. OPSQ area of this major sector but you can see that uh, something is still uh, missing here this major sector here subtend this angle at the center not this 150 degrees so that means there is need for us to forward get this angle at the center here which this sector subtend so how do we get that is by removing this angle 150 degree from total angle in a circle at the or at a point which is 360 degrees so that means this angle POQ reflex will be 360 minus 150 that will give us 210 degrees so now we can now find the area of this uh, uh, major sector here so what's formula will find the area of a sector theta over 360 times pi r squared 
So the hang rule theta is 210 divided by 360 times 20 over 7 times 4.2 squared. And if you simplify that quickly um, further by using your calculator or doing cutting one after the other, you get 32.32 34 other centimeter squared. And if you look at the option provided, we discover that it's only option D that is uh, correct. So quickly, let's move to question number 23. Question number 23 is application of trigonometric ratio. We are trying to apply trigonometric ratio to solve a uh, uh, question on triangles, right angle triangle. A ladder 6 meter le long leans against a vertical wall at an angle 53 degrees to the horizontal. So this line here is a ladder which is leaning against a vertical wall. So vertical wall at an angle 53 degree to the other so this ladder make angle 53 degree to this horizontal uh, ground so question has also find how high up the wall does the ladder reach we want to know the height of the wall so if you interpret that question then you'll be having a right angle triangle like this so using the grammatic ratio we have opposite over hypotenuse so that will give us sine 53 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse h over 6. If you cross multiply, we have h to be 6 times sine 53. And simplifying it further, we have 4.792 meter as the height of the uh, wall. And if you look at the option given to us, got option C is the correct option uh, in, the qu in the question. Next question, question number 24, is on the uh, measuration of solid shape. And the question is uh, on uh, a cylinder open at one hand. That means one of the hand, one or the other hand is closed. Open at one hand has a radius of 3.5 cm and a height of 8 cm. Calculate total surface area of the cylinder, taking uh, pi to be 20 over 7. We know that uh, when we are to find the total surface area of a cylinder, we have the core surface area plus the side that is uh, 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 open or both uh, closed. So in this case, one hand is closed, that means the other one is open. So if that should be the case now, we calculate uh, the, he the side that is uh, uh, closed here then uh, multiply uh, so add it to the core surface area and that will give us total surface area of that uh, cylinder so total surface area of a cylinder is a uh, pi r square which is this side that is a uh, uh, hope on closed rather sorry closed rather then because it's a circle that means the area of a circle here is pi r square plus the core surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h so if you factorize something something is common to d which is pi r r is common so if you factorize that and we have r plus 2h inside then substitute the values of these uh, variables one after the other pi is 20 over 7 times radius is 3.5 open bracket 3.5 plus 2 times height is h uh, it's other so if you simplify that you have 214.5 centimeter square as the total surface area of this cylinder open at one end so if we look at the option provided as well we have that option d is the correct option in this question number 24. don't forget we are solving a why uh, 2022 mathematics objective question to see what uh, 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 we need to learn and what we have missed what we need to do as a, a student, student that will be writing work uh, next year and uh, so we are on question number 24 which which is where what we just uh, solved right now let's move to question number 25 quickly question number 25 is uh is also measuration of plane shape and uh, in the diagram angle yz angle wzy wzy and angle wyx are right angle so it's, it is is there Find the perimeter of W S Y Z. Perimeter of W X Y Z. So they want us to find the perimeter of this diagram. And if you look at the diagram very well, we are having two right angle triangles. So to find the perimeter of this uh, diagram, 
this side is need to be we need to get the value of this side so that we can ha now add all the sides together to give us the perimeter then how do we find this side before we need to get if we look at this triangle here we only have one side given so that means we need to know one of the side know another side so that we can find this hypotenuse side of that triangle so of course for this triangle here we have two side given so we can use that to find this side which is being shared by these two triangles so if you use Pythagoras theorem this uh, side is the hypotenuse side of this triangle so the square of this side which is y w y squared equals to the square of the, the sum of the square of the remaining two sides 4 squared plus 3 squared and that gives us 16 plus 9 that's 25 so side w, w y will give us 5 centimeter so that means this side is 5 centimeter so now we can now use that to find the hypotenuse side of this triangle y x uh, x y so this side also is the hypotenuse side of this triangle so if you have y x squared equals to this side squared plus this side squared so that will give us a 5 squared plus 12 squared that will give us 25 plus 144 and that will give us a 169 then the square root of this will give us 13 so that means this side is 13 centimeter so to now know the perimeter of this whole diagram that will be this side plus this side plus this side plus this side and if you add them together that will give us 32 centimeter and that is the uh, solution to that question and the best option we have here or the correct option is uh, option b let's move to question number 26. question number 26 is uh, also on plane measuration the length of a rectangle is 10 centimeter if its perimeter is 28 centimeter find the area of the rectangle now what is the uh, perimeter of a rectangle is a uh, two length plus two breadth because perimeter is talking about addition of all the size so in a rectangle you have two length you have two breadth so two length plus two breadth we have been given the length so we are, and we are also be given the perimeter of the rectangle which is 28 equals to two open bracket length is 10 plus breadth then we can divide both side by two so that will be 14 equals to 10 plus b so color light times b will be equal to 14 minus 10 that will be 4 centimeter that means the breadth is 4 centimeter therefore the area of the rectangle will be length times breadth then we have it 10 times 4 will give us 40 centimeter square so the area of the rectangle is 40 centimeter square and if you look at the option that is uh, given to us we will discover that option b is the correct option here let's move to question number 27 question number 27 is on plane geometry as well plane geometry in the diagram mrw mrw is a straight line mnst mnst is also a straight line side mn side mn is equal to nr so that we are having this stripe and this stripe on it so angle mnr m n r is 110 and angle w r s angle w r s is 86 degrees find the value of x which is this uh angle here then how can we get that since this side is equal to this side that means triangle m r n is isosceles because two sides are equal and if that is the case also base angles of isosceles triangle are equal so that means this angle here is equal to this angle here and that's what we are having here then if this angle is equal to this angle here that means i can find this angle that is here by removing this 110 from total angle in a triangle which is 180 then divide the answer by 2 and that will give me this angle here so that's why having said uh, that why we said that angle m r n m r n which is this angle here is 180 minus 110 divided by 2 180 minus 110 will give us 70 divided by 2 that gives us 35 so that means this angle here is 35 degrees also we know that this angle plus this angle inside plus angle 86 will give us 180 degrees raising angle on a straight line so that what we are having here that all this addition of this angle this angle this angle then this angle will give us 180 degrees so we know this angle to be 35 we do we are looking for this angle nrs then we know this angle 86 so that means if you simplify that further we have angle nrs 
35 plus 86 will give us 121 equals 180. So collect light times NR will give us 180 minus 121, which is 59 degrees. It means that this angle here, this angle NRS is 59 degrees. Then if that should be the case, our aim is to find angle X. Then, but we know that uh, this angle M n r which is 110 degrees is an exterior angle to this triangle angle 110 degrees is an exterior angle to this triangle so that means exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angle of that triangle so that means this angle 110 degrees is equal to this plus angle x here so that we're having here that uh, 110 is equal to 59 degrees which is this angle here plus x then if you collect light times, we have S to be 110 minus 59, which is 51 degrees. So the option here is a 51, which is option C, as the correct option there. If you move to question number 28, the question is on also application of geometric ratio. A boy 1.4 meter tall stood 10 meter away from the from a tree of I 12 meter. Calculate correct to this nearest nearest degree the angle of elevation of the top of the tree from the boy's eyes so if you look at the question that means you need you must be able to interpret the question diagrammatically then if you look at that the boy is 1.4 meter high that's the height of the boy and there is in front of uh, a tree of height 12 meter that means this tree you're having here is 12 meter in height and we are told that the distance between the foot of the boy and the tree is 10 meter. Then we are to find the angle of elevation of the top of the tree from the high eyes of the boy. This is the head of the boy now. Initially, the boy is supposed to be looking straight like this now. Now, if you now leave that sight and look at the top of the tree, that means it's going to elevate, which is this angle of uh, angle S here, which is angle of elevation. So we are supposed to find that angle, which is angle X here. And how do we do that? If from here to here is 1.4, that means from here to here is also 1.4. And if from here to here is 1.4, but we know from year to year, which is the height of the tree, which is 12 meter. So how can we get from year to year? It's by removing 1.4 from 12, and that will give us 10.6. Then from this triangle as well, we know that uh, this side is equal to this side because it's a rectangle. This shape is a rectangle. So that means this side is also 10 meter. So we cannot use this right angle triangle to find the angle of elevation. So this uh, angle S here, this side and this side, the relationship between them is sign, sorry, tan opposite over adjacent. Tan S equals to 10.6 divided by 10, which is this side adjacent. So which is good to give us 1.06. Then, then if you find the tan inverse, you find the value of uh, angle X which is going to be 46, uh, 47 degrees so to the nearest degree right now so the best option we have here is option b as the solution to that question i hope you are learning uh, you are enjoying the uh, you are uh, coping and uh, sorry you you are on, you understand uh, the way we have been solving this question uh, right from the beginning so if you do let's continue uh, to question number 29 so question number 29 is a uh, complementary angles on a, of a uh, ang of a trigonometric ratio complementary angles we know that when you have a right angle triangle one of the angles is a right angle 90 degrees so the remaining two angles are complementary because they add up to 90 degrees so that's the, qu the question uh, is from that uh, uh, complementary angles we are given the sign 5x minus 28 degrees equals to cos 3s and 50 degrees you have to find the value of x knowing that our angle ranges from 0 degrees to 90 degrees which is a right angle triangle now if you look that uh, if you look at the question given to us there is a relation there is a if you if you, there's a relationship that uh, corresponds uh, with this question given to us which is a uh, sign x is equal to cos 90 minus x then that's one that, that is the relationship that uh, corresponds with the question given to us now what do we do we need to make our angle x here to look like a question given to us that what do i do here so i will replace this angle s with the 5s minus 8x i will replace angle x here with a 5s minus 28 
then that's what we are having here then also the x here as well i will replace it with 5s minus 28 so that will give us cost 90 minus open bracket 5f minus 28 then from there now i can uh, uh, simplify this one for that out 9 90 minus open bracket minus open raised bracket you have minus 5s and that's one of you was plus 28 then from there now it shows that i can now equate this cost with this cost here so that may have cost 3s minus 50 equals to cost 90 minus 5s plus 28 then cost we take care of cost 3s minus 50 equals to 90 minus 5s plus 28 then i can collect light times 3s plus 5a equals to 90 plus 28 then plus 50 8a is equals to 168 s will be 21 degrees so the option we have here is uh, option c as the correct option for that question number 29 question number 30 and question number 31 uh we have to use this diagram to solve those two questions so there are two those questions are from circle geometry circle geometry in the diagram mnr is a tangent to the circle center o at n this line straight line is a tangent to this circle at point n here then angle nos is 108 degrees this angle here is 108 degrees use the information to answer question 30 and 31 find angle osn angle osn this angle here we want us to find this angle here so we can see that uh, this line on is a is a radius or which is also equal to line os also radius as well because we are told that uh, o is the center of the circle then that make this triangle we are having here an isosceles triangle because this is a radius radio that means they are equal so that means this is an isosceles triangle then if that should be the case now base angles of isosceles triangle are equal that means this angle here is equal to this angle here then how do I not get this angle I'm also find is by removing this angle from total angle in a triangle which is 180 then divided by 2 because I know that this angle is equal to this angle so 180 minus 108 divided by 2 give us 72 over 2 that give us 36 degrees so that means this angle here we are looking for is 36 degrees likewise the angle here is also 36 degrees so if you look at angle OSN which is this angle here is what 36 degrees which is angle C this is option C option c is the correct uh, option in the question then we have to use this diagram as well to solve uh to find angle s n r s n r s n r which is the angle here angle here are looking for how do we do that how can we get that this radius is perpendicular to this tangent so that means this total angle here is a uh, 90 degrees it's one of the theorem in a uh, circle geometry that this angle made uh, that uh, that is formed from this uh, radius to this uh, tangent is 90 degrees so if the total angle here is 90 degrees and we know this angle here as 36 angle o n s as 36 degrees then we can easily find this by removing this from 90 degrees and that will give us the angle that is there so that's how we are having angle s n r we are looking for as 90 minus 36 degrees and that will give us 54 degrees so the best option there is a uh, option c as well so that is the solution to uh question number 30 and question number 31 let's move to the next question which is on the probability probability is the quest next question mr gabriel is pregnant sorry mrs gabriel pardon me is pregnant the probability that she will give birth to a girl is half and probability that the baby will have blue high is one over four or quarter what is the probability that she will give birth to a girl with blue eyes the probability uh that she'll give birth to a girl uh, to a girl and uh, with blue eyes will be probability that uh, uh, she'll give birth to a girl multiplied by probability that uh, she uh the baby will be a blue high we have a blue high is a uh, that will be one over one over eight that is this time this this time will be one over eight. so the option there is a uh, option c as simple as that now question number 33 now let's look at this critically question is from on uh, measure of center tendency which is statistics and uh, it's a 
a, a word problem the mean of a, a set of 10 numbers is 56 the mean of a set of 10 numbers is 56 if the mean of the first nine numbers is 55 find the 10 number now what do i what did i do i named i named this value with uh to be the, the this digit this to be the, the 10 digit the first 10 digit s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 s6 s7 s8 s9 s10 so if i'm asked to find the, the mean that means i have to add all of them together divided every by 10 <coughs> that is number of early, number of data there and the value is what 56 so from there i can cross multiply when i cross multiply this time will multiply you see that i have 560 so i can call this one equation one then let's go to the next question the mean of five first nine numbers that means the mean of this first nine number here is also 55 so when i had s1 to s9 together divided by 9 will give us 55 also i can cross multiply 9 times 55 give me 495 then this s1 to f uh, s9 is also in this first equation so i can put the value of s1 to s9 to, which is 49 in this x uh, equation one so what did i do i put i, I represent this 491 495 with uh, this from s9 to s1 here so that means i will have 495 plus x10 495 plus x10 equals to 50 560 then from there i can find my s10 which is 560 minus 495 and that will give me 65 as the value of the the 10 digits there and the correct option there is a uh, option b as the correct value in the question i hope you understand what i have explained there if you don't understand it please try to pause the video uh, rewind it and listen to what i said there and you understand let's move to the next question we have to simplify this and this question is a simplification of algebraic expression as uh, a algebraic fraction rather we have to simplify this algebraic fraction if you look at this the numerator force we can uh, factorize something out there two is common here so we can factorize the two out two into one minus nine m squared over one plus three m so one minus nine m squared is a is a difference of two squares it's a difference of two squares so you can simplify it by saying this will give us a uh you can say this is one squared minus three squared m squared one squared because one square will give us one minus three squared three squared will give us nine the m square so that's it uh, divided of two square and that we can be you can write as one minus three m open bracket one plus three m it means that when i multiply these two brackets it's going to give me this bracket back divided by 1 plus 3 m the 1 plus 3 m can take care of 1 plus 3 m that means we have 2 into 1 plus 3 m left so and the best option we have there is option c uh, for that question so i hope you understand that the, the step we have taken in that uh, to solve that question let's move to the next question which is uh, also circle geometry so the question is on circle geometry in the diagram the diagram shows triangle PQR inscribed in a circle. PS is a tangent, that is this line here is a tangent to the circle at P, at point P here. Find angle PRQ, PRQ. That means you are looking for this angle that is here. This angle here, you are looking for PRQ. Then if that should be the case now, we are giving this angle here and this angle here. If you understand circle geometry very well, we discover that there's a relationship between this angle 73 degrees and this angle PQR, this angle here. What is the relationship? Alternate segment. This angle here is equal to this angle here, which is alternate segment. So that's what we are having here that uh, angle uh, RQP is 73 degrees, alternate segment. Then also, if we know this angle, then we know that ang this angle plus this angle plus this angle inside the triangle will add up to 180 degrees sum of angle in the triangles so we already know this angle as 73 this to be 58 then we we are looking for this one we can add them together to be cos 180 degrees so the angle prq will give us 180 degrees minus 135 degrees where do we get one, 130, 131 that is 73 plus 58 so that means angle prq will give us 49 degrees so which is option a 
as the correct uh, answer for that question. If you move to the next question, which is question number 36, don't forget we are going to question number 50 soon. Now, the question is a uh, geometry as well. Now, it's both uh, it's a geometric question. In the diagram, triangle MNR. MNR is inscribed in a circle MNR as well. Circle MNR. And PQ is a straight line. This is a straight line. A second so an angle MRN angle M M R N is 41 degrees and angle PMR PMR is 141 degrees find angle Q N R Q N R the angle outside here so you are looking for Q N R we are looking for that angle then how can we find the angle we are giving this angle and we are giving this angle then we should know that uh, we can find this angle inside here inside this triangle because this angle plus this angle should give us 180 degrees they are both adjacent angle or angle on a straight line adjacent angle or angle on a straight line if that should be the case now then to get this angle here that will be 180 minus 141 and that should give us uh, uh, 39 degrees so if this angle is 39 degrees this is a right this is a triangle so and this angle we are looking for which is angle QNR is alternate so it's an exterior angle it's an exterior angle to this triangle and exterior angle with triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles so we know this angle here is 39 and we know this angle here is 41 so to get this angle will be addition of the two which is uh, 39 plus 41 will give us what 80 degrees so it means that this angle qnr is 80 degrees and the best option we have there is option b as the correct option question number 37 which is on inequalities inequalities or question number uh, 37 we have to solve to for y there now if you look at the uh, question given to us, we can find the LCM, which is 12, and multiply through by 12. When you multiply through by 12, we have 12 times y plus 2 over 4, minus 12 times y minus 1 over 3, uh, which is uh, greater than uh, 12 times 1. Then 4 in 12 will give us 3. 3 in 12 will give us 4. Then 12 times 1 will give us 12. Open the bracket with the, uh, uh, we have 3y plus 6 minus uh, 4y plus 4 greater than 12 collect light time 3y minus 4y will give us minus y 6 plus 4 will give us 10 greater than 12 collect light time as well minus y greater than 12 uh, minus 10 minus y greater than uh, uh, that will give us minus y greater than uh, uh, 2 so that means y will be less than minus 2 so option b is the correct option in the option provided in the for that question quickly let's move to question number uh 39 uh and question number sorry question number 38 and question number 39 the ages in years of some members in a single in a single group are 12 47 49 15 43 41 13 39 43 41 36 use the information to answer question number 38 and 39 the focus question number 36 that find the lower quarter quarter is a uh, one over four so lower quarter is a uh, one over four now how do we get that if we need to get the position of the quarter first how do we do that is like if is by rearranging this data from ascending so from ascending order or descending under so when we arrange it you have it this like this and there are 11 digits here so we need to get the position of the lower quartile that will be number of data we have there plus one over four that will be 11 plus one over four that give us three so the third data here is the third uh, is the lower quartile which is a uh, one two three which is 15 so the lower quartile is 15 that means the option here is option c then question number 39 said that we have to find the main mean you know how to get mean of an ungrouped data is by adding those data together 
divided it by the number of data we have there. So when we had all the data together and divided by 11, so we have 379 addition of this over 11 that give us 34.45, which is option C as the best option for those uh, the question. You can see they are very simple questions that uh, you can relate uh, with. Quickly, let's move to question number 40. Question number 40 is on uh, maturation of solid shapes. <laughs> maturation of solid shapes and uh, find correct to two decimal places the volume of a sphere whose radius is 3 cm you have to take pi to be 22 over 7 you are, want to measure a uh, sphere here the volume of a sphere capacity of a sphere having known the radius of the sphere so the volume of a sphere is a uh, 4 pi r cube over 3 and uh, we know pi to be 22 over 7 and uh, times radius is a uh, 3 3 cube then and you should know that the reason why this is a uh, 7 here because 20 over 7 7 can come down here so if you simplify that further we have 4 times 22 give us 88 3 cube will give us 27 over 3 times 1 3 times 7 give us 21 then from there if you simplify that further we have 114 114.14 centimeter cube as the volume of the sphere and uh, the best option there is the uh, option D. Uh, option D is the correct option there. Yeah, question number 41 is on a uh, plane maturation. You are trying to measure uh, trapezium here. The length of the parallel side of the trapezium are 9 cm and 12 cm. If the area of the trapezium is 105 cm squared, find the perpendicular distance between the parallel side. That you are looking for the height of the trapezium. We know that the area of the trapezium is half A plus B multiplied by the height, where A and B are the two parallel sides of the trapezium. So, and H is the height or the distance between the, the parallel sides. So, we have been given the area of the trapezium as 105 equals to half into bracket addition of the two parallel sides, 9 plus 12 multiplied by the height. Don't forget we are looking for the height the perpendicular distance between the parallel sides so if you simplify that we have it to be 9 plus 12 give us 21 21 times h will give us 21 h divided by 2 from there we can cross multiply then we have 21 h equal to 105 divided times 2 times 2 that will give us 110 21 h equal to 210 h will be 10 centimeter by dividing both sides by 21 so the height of the trapezium is 21 centimeter and the best option we have here is option C according to the question. So we move to question number 42 which is the volume of a cone. We have to find the volume of a cone of a radius 3.5 centimeter and vertical height of 12 centimeter. Volume of a cone. The question also is on a measuration of solid shapes. So we are finding the volume of a cone and we know that the volume of a cone is the one third of the volume of a cylinder. One third of the volume of a cylinder. Volume of a cylinder is pi r a pi r square h. So the volume of a cone is one third of it. So we know the radius, we know the height, so we can you can surely find the volume. So one over three times pi is twenty over seven times radius is uh, three point five two squared times h, which is twelve. Then the volume, if you simplify that further by cutting and using your calculator to simplify, you have the volume of the cone to be 154.0 centimeter cube. And uh, the best option we have there is option D as the, uh, the correct answer for question number 42. Now, question number uh, 43 is uh, it's on set. Uh, it's on set. And we can use a Venn diagram to solve the question or the formula, this formula that we used the other time. A local community has two new newspapers, the morning times and the evening dispatch. <coughs> Sorry, the morning times is read by 45% of the household and the evening dispatch, uh, evening dispatch by 60%. If 20% of the household read uh, both papers find the probability that a particular also read at least one paper so morning times empty 
uh, 45 uh, over 100 out of all over out of 100 so 45 read it. so that is 0 0.45 even if dispatch ed 60 out of 100 re re read down one that's 0 0.6 then both those that read number of people that read both uh, uh, money times and the evening dispatch is a uh, 20 out of 100 so that is 0 0.2 so our aim is to find the probability that I uh, also read at least one paper so this is uh, the number of uh, people that uh, uh, the union of uh, both uh, money times and the uh, evening dispatch that that is the uh, people that, that read at least one so which is the number that read uh, money times and the plus number that read e evening dispatch minus interaction between both of them so that will give us uh, if you simplify this by putting all this data here you have 0 0.5 0 0.85 rather as the uh, probability of uh, uh, you have to find so option c is the correct option there as question number 43 now question number 44 is on a plane maturation a rectangle has width 3 over 4 cm and the area 3 over number 3 over 8 cm square find the length so this is also simple you are looking you are looking for the length given the area of the rectangle and the breadth so area of the rectangle is 10 times breadth so we are giving the area which is 3 over number 3 over 8 equals to length times 3 over 4 then convert this miss number to improper fraction that gives us 27 over 8 equals to 3 hell over 4 cross multiply we have a 3 hell times 8 will give us 24 hell equals to 27 times 4 then divide both side by 24 that gives us our hell so we have that to be uh, 9 over 2 left then that will give us 4 number 1 over 2 centimeter so if that should be the case now what can we do? Uh, the length is a uh, four number one over four o number one over two four and a half centimeter. So the best option we have here is the option B as the length, the value of the length of the rectangle. Next question is question number forty five. It's on statistics, and also what problem in it? The mean of two numbers x and y is forty two is four rather. The mean of two numbers x and y is 4 that if i had s and y together divided by 2 it should give me 4 so that's the the meaning the main add it together divided by number of data that is equals to 4 because multiply s plus y equals to 8 you can call that one equation 1 let's move further find the mean of the four numbers x comma 2s comma y comma and 2y so we are looking for the mean of these four set of data. Now, how do you find the mean of them? Is by adding those set of data together divided by four. Then, how do you do that? Two s plus x will give us three s. Y plus two will give us three y over four. Then, if something is common to the denominator, we can factorize three out. Three into three s plus y over four. But we know the value of s plus y here, which is eight. So we can return that one here, 3 times 8 over 4, that's 24 over 4, and that will give us 6. So the correct option there is a C as the question number uh, 45. We are moving towards the end of the question. Don't forget we are solving why heck uh, 2022 mathematics objective questions. We are on uh, question number uh, 46 right now. So we have four questions to go and uh, i hope you have been uh, following from the beginning don't forget i said that the question is of two uh, phase two phases rather you are going to solve the objective the objective you are solving the objective question right now and later we are going to solve the theoretical part as well so i want you to watch out for the theoretical part also so question number 46 is on the coordinate geometry coordinate geometry the straight line y is equal to ms minus 4 passes through the point minus 4 comma c which is the coordinate calculate the gradient of the line so we are given the equation of a straight line that passes through this point then we know that uh, this equation given to us look like the template of a linear equation which is y equals to ms minus c 
so that should be the case that we know that this m is the gradient of the straight line therefore we can we are able to find a gradient according to the question so we can make this gradient so the formula m so that will give us m a m x equals to y plus 4 by taking this 4 to this side so we can divide both sides by x to get our gradient m equals to y plus 4 over x but we are told that the, the line passes through this point that means at that point our y is 16 our x is minus 4 so put that into this equation we have 16 plus 4 over minus 4 16 plus 4 gives us 20 over minus 4 that gives us minus 5 so the gradient of the straight line that passes to this point is uh, minus 5 so the option is option a as the correct option for that question number 46 question number 47 is on a quadratic equation we have to find the volume of the value of uh, p uh, where these two equations have common root so the question is very simple as well if they have common root that means they are equal uh, quadratic equation and uh, if that's the case then we can compare the two equations to find the value of our p s square is here s square is here so we cancelled so the coefficient of x also we can convert the coefficient of x minus 5 x it should be equal to p x so s we take care of x that means our p is what minus 5 so the value of p here is minus 5 and uh, the best option here is uh, option d according to the question given to us then question number 48 a trader made a loss of 15 percent when an article was sold find the ratio of the selling price to the cost price the question also is on uh, profit is from the profit and loss so and we are given the percentage loss so i said let s be the selling price and c be cost uh, cost price so percentage loss should be uh, the loss over uh, cost uh, cost price multiplied by 100 but well, since you have been given the value in percentage already so that's why i remove the percentage and how do we find the loss loss is the cost minus the uh, selling price cost price minus selling price so from there 15 percent uh, is equal to c uh, cost price minus selling price over cost price 15 percent is 15 over 100 then from there you can cross multiply 15 times c will give us 15 c equals to 100 c minus 100 s collect like times we have 100 c minus 100 c so we have 15 c minus 100 c rather equals to minus 100 x so 15 c minus 100 c will give us minus 85 c equals to minus 100 x so we can divide both sides by 100 and uh, that will give us uh, 85 over 100 then divide also by c we go go s over c so you can see the ratio of uh, selling price to cost price will be 17 to what to 20. so the ratio of selling price to cost price is 17 to 20 and uh, the correct option there is uh, option 48 uh, option uh, c for the question number 48 now question number 49 which is the second to the last question for this uh, uh, Wahek uh, 2022 mathematics objective question we are given that uh, log uh, base 3 of 27 is 2s plus 1 find the value of x so the question is very simple as well how often can i raise uh, 3 with this to get 27 that's the interpretation of this how often can i raise uh, x uh, uh, can i raise 3 to get what 27 so 27 is equal to 3 raised to power 2s plus 1 then take change this one to the index form that will have base of 3 that 3 raised to power 3 equals to 3 raised to power 2s plus 1 the base can take care of the base so we have a uh, 2s plus 1 equals to 3 then collect like times 2s equals to 3 minus 1 and that gives us 2 divide both side by 2 that gives us f equals to what 1 so at this junction the correct option there is option b which is one for this question number 49 so the last question for this uh, year 2022 why uh, objective question mathematics mathematics objective question is a uh, on quadratic equation c square equals of 5s minus 1 
you can see that the, the question is not well written so they want you to rearrange it first where you arrange it you have 6 square minus 5 x plus 1 equals to 0 then you can now solve it using i solve it uh, using factorization method 6 will multiply 1 first you have 6 then i'll look for two number can multiply together to give me 6 and when i add them together it'll give me minus 5 the two number are minus 3 minus 2 minus 3 times minus 2 give us plus 6 what is minus 3 minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 so this will replace this minus 5 here there will be having 6s square minus 3s minus 2s plus 1 equals 0 factorize this 3s is common we have 2s minus 1 inside here also minus 1 is common we have 2s minus 1 equals to 0 then that means you have 3s minus 1 2s minus 1 equals 0 simply means 3s minus 1 is equals to 0 or 2s minus 1 equals to 0 from there you can find our heads to be 1 over 3 or 1 over 2 so the correct option there is the uh, option c which is the correct option for the uh the uh question now that is the end of the uh all of the objective question given to them in the WAEC mathematics uh WAEC mathematics objective question 2022 i hope uh, you understand uh, how we have been able to solve this uh, question systematically now if you enjoy it you will understand what you have done there you can uh, uh, like the video you can share it comment on it and uh, if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel please subscribe to the channel so that uh, we can uh, receive more uh, you can you will be notified when next uh, we post a new video uh, share the video like it and uh, don't forget i told you that uh, the other part of the video is uh, the theory theoretical aspect of it that we'll be uh, solving very soon so thank you and god bless you